Okay, time for some CNC updates. I've uh, moved things around here to make more space for this guy, and I'm pretty sure this is where I'm leaving it. Um, the table is kind of big for this size shop, and having it here against the wall, it uh, keeps it as much out of the way as possible, I guess. I can still get in the uh, left side here and get to the closet with all the shelving, and on the right side, there's still room for the workbench and a place to stand. So, it does monopolize a lot of floor space, but I'll learn to work around it. And if it does become a problem in the long term, I guess I can always use this CNC to build a smaller, more accurate CNC later on. Right? Now, uh, having it against the wall does mean I lose access to that side there. But I can still get to these other three sides, either for loading things on, taking them off, or getting underneath for things I'm at store under there. The uh, window would probably also come in handy for ventilation, because right now, my shop ventilation is limited to that fan right there. I have that typically blowing uh, as an exhaust, taking air out of the shop, while uh, this window here is cracked open, giving me kind of a cross breeze, you know, and fresh air in here. Now, obviously, with this table running right in front of the window, rather than having the cross breeze come this direction and dragging all that smoke and soot and stuff across the room, I'll turn the other fan around, I have that blow fresh air in under power, and add another fan to that window to help blow air out under power as well. So you can combine that uh, with the water table that will be here on the plasma, and then my sulfur and a respirator. And I think as far as you know, home shop welders go, I'll be doing pretty uh, good in terms of air quality. Now the orientation of the table is not ideal. Uh, let me explain. So the cutting area will be four by three, right? And my thought initially was I could do a full four by eight sheet by indexing it in thirds. So slide it on, cut the first third, slide it through, next third, through again, last third, right? Only problem is there's not nearly enough room in the room to get a four by eight sheet and slide it through. If I had the table turned 90 degrees and pulled out from the wall, then there would be room. The problem is there's not really room for that in the room, right? Uh, it's just, I think it's, what, 12 by 22 in here? So it's pretty tight. Um, maybe eventually if I reorganize how this all works and that kind of stuff. But for the time being, at least, I'll have it this direction. Uh, now I can still do a full 4 by 8 sheet indexing it the other way. I just can't cut the whole thing. So between these two posts, it's about 50 inches. So I can still slide a sheet on this direction, pull it out, turn it around, and slide it back on and cut the other half. But I'm limited to cutting only the three feet in the middle then. So it's not the best, not the worst, it'll do. So I built and installed the trusses that join these two halves, and I've built but not yet installed the uh, components for the x axes. These trusses are done just like the side ones were with a 2x211 gauge and a 1x114 gauge tube. And I did a little layout and tacking once again on my trusty piece of MDF. And this here is a flat board I can clamp stuff to while I tack it up. Then I can take it off and uh, go from joint to joint, moving around as I weld to help uh, dissipate the heat and keep things as square as possible. Uh, let's see. Now there's no weld actually connecting this cross truss to that side truss. The only connection are the quarter inch plates at the top and bottom and the bolts between them. And those are half inch graded bolts with 5 8 inch holes drilled through everything to give me some room uh, you know, for adjustment and squaring. And actually squaring the table didn't go that well, uh, but I'll get that in a little bit. Now with this uh, truss here and that one bolted in place, this table is very rigid. Like, you hear that vibration, but all that's coming from here, from these pieces. Because these are not bolted down or welded in place or anything yet. They're just sitting here. And even still, when I hit this table pretty hard, they don't fall off. <laughs> This is very rigid now, and I still have to do the um, crossbars underneath that will be supporting the water basin. So by that point, this guy ain't going to budge at all. <laughs> now, the uh, standoffs are 6 inches tall. So 4 inch base, then a piece of 2 inch tube which are 90 degrees, and then you add the 2 inch uh, x-axis on top of that, and that'll put the bottom of the gantry about 8 inches above the top of the table. From what I understand, that's about average. And that should be plenty of room to put, uh, you know, a tube cutter or whatever other upgrades I want to put on here later on. Now the standoff has a pair of 
quarter inch wide slots on it, and they run that way. And then each X axis has a pair of quarter inch wide slots running the other direction. That way I can fit these uh, socket cap screws. And I have the ability to uh, move the X axis, either changing the angle or just shifting it side to side without changing the angle or back and forth a little bit, or also shimming one side or the other to lift it up and adjust the slant. I think with that, I'll have everything I need to get these two uh, X axes coplanar. It's important to have, uh, you know, one consistent gap width from end to end, right? You don't want this one turned in like that and that one turned in, you know, the other direction. Otherwise, the uh, gantry will rack up as it heads down the axes. But you also don't want uh, one of them sloping downward and the other one sloping up. Otherwise, that twisting motion will also make the gantry rack up. So, I think with the uh, you know, method I devised there, I should have plenty of adjustment to get these things you know, perfectly aligned. Now you can see the uh, slots here are a little bit sloppy because I did not spend enough time jigging that up well and that turned out to be one major pain in the ass. Uh, the standoffs went pretty well, but when I reset it to fit the longer work pieces for these axes, um, I made it too thin. And ended up having to take a grinder to it and then like hitting it with a file and uh, take your time, set it up, maybe do a test piece too if you have some scrap laying around do a test on that before you go and cut everything and find out, well, shit, I did it too small, right? <laughs> because it will save you, uh, you know, potentially an hour of filing by hand. As for squaring this thing, I got something very weird. This angle here is more than 90 degrees, if you uh, listen and look for the play. This is obtuse. This angle here. also obtuse. Both those angles there, also obtuse. <laughs> now it's not supposed to be like possible to even have a quadrilateral where all four angles are more than 90 degrees. Like mathematically, that's not possible. So I'm not so sure what's going on here. Uh, either there's like some twist or bow in the hot rolled steel. It's just, you know, something I can't do anything about. Or maybe there's a MIG splatter I missed. I'm Pretty sure I cleaned it up, but maybe there's some MIG spider there interfering with the square. Or maybe the square itself just isn't actually square. Right? It's a nicer one. I haven't dropped it. It should be accurate. But again, it's just Home Depot grade. It's not a stair or anything fancy. So I'm not so sure what's going on there. But anyway, it's pretty close to square. And the gap there to there is the same as the gap from here to here. So, you know, it's close enough that it should act as a good base that on top of the standoffs, you can make up for the rest. What is slightly more concerning is the difference in slant on this side and this side. So that corner and that corner ended up high, or this one and this one ended up low. And I think that happened because I didn't shim the feet before both in the truss in place. So these legs were kind of sitting in a twisted position already, just because they were following the slope of the concrete floor. And then I bolted the truss in place, and that kind of locked it in with the twist. So the way I installed it was starting at that corner there, and having all the, the bolts installed very loosely. But going to that corner, squaring it up, clamping it down with the bolts, that one then, making sure the gap end to end was consistent, and then coming in and doing this truss. When I got to here, I found this thing was impinging pretty heavily on this face and this face. And now that I've assembled, I can kind of see why that was. It's because this leg was lower than this leg. So that was making the truss sit at a bit of an angle and then causing the diagonal to take up the gap width here as opposed to the straight length of the truss. So my solution at the time, of course, was simply to grind the two faces down just a little bit to make it fit. Um, but now that I kind of see what the issue is a bit better, uh, I think I'm gonna go back and loosen things up again and retighten them down. So I can show you uh, how level it is right now. By adjusting the feet, I'd get this guy here perfectly level. But on the other side, it's sloped a little bit that way. Now on top here, 
it's still sloped that way, but not quite as much. Because I came over here and shimmed it with a few washers. Now the washers are not a long-term thing, they're just, you know, something I had handy for now. And this one here, I also shimmed to make it slope the same way. So ideally when that gantry tube is sitting on top of two of the rollers, they'll be able to move back and forth without racking up. But uh, this here is a lot of shimming on the end and more than I really wanted, you know, or was planning for. I was expecting like, I don't know, maybe an eighth of an inch tops or something, or like even better, just use like some soda can shims. It was somewhere here. Uh, <laughs> I went out and bought soda to actually have soda cans to shim this table. Because <laughs> otherwise I don't have this stuff laying around the house. But uh, the aluminum can is like a good uh, four thou thick. And it's consistent and it's, you know, stable under pressure and all. Um, so it makes for a pretty good shim in the shop. Um, but yeah, uh, it's, you know, a little bit off. But I think the next step will be to tack these standoffs in place. You know, I'll come in with a piece of flat bar on this side and this side and clamp it down with a bit of a standoff to get past the weld beads here. And then just tack it so that these standoffs will be as much in line with these legs as possible. Um, and then I'll remove the trusses, weld all the way around the standoffs, grind this flush so again the uh, truss can come back in place. And then when I reinstall the whole thing, I will shim the feet before I do the bolts. And that will hopefully get these tops much more coplanar, so there's less adjustment to do at the top of the standoffs. <laughs> That's the theory anyway. And if not, fuck it. I'll just use the shims. 